Hello YouTube, Frank here, and today we're going to be installing the latest stable version of the Linux kernel. As you can see, I'm already logged in here to a CentOS 7 machine, and we can see that we are running the 3.10 uh, version of the kernel. Uh, that's the latest version that's available in our local repos. Um, so let's go ahead and check what the current latest stable version of the kernel is and we can see here that it's 5.5.8 so that's what we're going to be installing today we're going to be downloading the kernel source code compiling it and installing it on our CentOS 7 machine um, so let's go ahead and get started basically before we can proceed we'll need to install um, these tools right here um, now I'm not really going to go into detail on this, but if you're curious you can go ahead and maybe Google each one and see what you can find out. Um, so some of these packages I already have installed, obviously I did this beforehand, uh, but let's go ahead and install the ones that I don't have. Okay, so installing, okay, awesome. So now we have the packages that we need to get started. We're going to want to go here and uh, pull the latest version, so 5.5.8. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that link. Go back to our machine here. Um, let's do a wget. Um, that might be a package you need as well if you don't already have wget installed. Basically, that'll pull the file here into our local directory. And we can see we have the source code. So let's go ahead and extract this tarball file. So we do dash x for extract, b for verbose, f for file, Linux 5.5. Okay, so we're extracting our Linux tarball here. And yeah, as you can see, there's a good amount of files in there. Oh, would you look at that? Put that just on. look at that. I can't pull it out either. I'd have to drill it. Why don't you just look it at it? Yeah, it's sad. It's the only mark. I, I mean, just car. look at it. Yeah. So we can see we have our Linux 5.5 directory. So if we go in here, we can see our Linux kernel files here. So the next step is basically to, we're going to want to copy our existing uh, kernel config into this directory. So you can look at your existing uh, kernel configs inside the boot directory. You can see I have a couple here. Um, my, the latest one is going to be this one. So just so you can get a better idea what this file is, we'll go ahead and open it real quick. Basically is, there you go, our kernel configuration file. Ah. So basically we want to copy our existing kernel, kernel configuration file into our Linux 5.5 directory. So we can do that by doing cp v, and I'll go ahead and copy the latest one I have here, and we're going to name it .config. So now that file is in our Linux uh, kernel directory. The next step is basically to run the menu config so we can configure the options in our kernel, and we can do that by running make menu config. This will basically pull up a kernel configuration menu where you can select the options you want to enable, disable on your uh, Linux kernel. So personally, I'm going to leave it by default, but if you want to play around with it, obviously there's a couple options there. Do be careful. Uh, if you choose a configuration that's not supported by your hardware or something, you could definitely run into something like kernel panic or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it default. I'll just hit save dot config I'll hit OK and hit exit and then we'll go down here again hit exit again oops yeah hit exit again and that's ready to go so at this point we want to go ahead and build our RPM package we are on CentOS 7 so um, that uses the Red Hat package manager Obviously, if you're using a Debian-based distribution, you'd want to do uh, research on that one. So, I mean, I'll, I'll put Red Hat on the title or something. So, okay, back to the task at hand. Basically, at this point, we want to do compile the kernel into a RPM package. 
we can do that by running make rpm dash package now this process can take a while depending on the specs on your server or you know desktop or wherever you're running this so i do recommend running in in the background uh, for this you can install screen so let's go ahead and do a sudo yum install screen dash y um, my credentials real quick okay so we've installed screen we want to go ahead and start a new screen session so I'll just call it screen dash s kernel compile this will drop you into a new uh, shell session that runs in the background and basically here we can do our make rpm dash package command and this will go ahead and start uh, compiling your Linux kernel with the options that you went ahead and configured. Now, um, like I mentioned earlier, this can definitely take a while depending on your uh, specs. So go ahead and just leave that running in the background. You can press Control A and Control D to detach from the screen session you started. And you can see that that's running in the background now. Um, if you want to hop back into it, you can do screen dash x and do the kernel, the name of the screen session, and you can see your drop back in there. So I'll go ahead and, you know, get back to you guys once my kernel has finished compiling, and we'll go ahead and go to the installation portion of it. Thank you. Two hours later. So after a few hours, <laughs> we can come back here and see that our kernel has finished compiling. So let's list our screen sessions. Let's reopen our kernel compile session. And we can see here that it has finished compiling and it will uh, output the directories where you can find your kernel RPMs. So in this case, it's in my home directory inside the RPM, RPM build folder. So let me go ahead and exit and close out. So as you can see, the screen session is no longer there. So now we'll go ahead and enter the RPM build directory. It's inside our RPMs folder. And then here, oops, 686. Okay. And then here we can see our actual kernel files. So the next step here is basically to install them. On CentOS 7, you can use the yum package manager to basically install these for you. So let's do sudo yum install, and we'll copy over the kernel files. So here we go, copy, paste, <laughs> copy, paste. I'm gonna go ahead and put dash y, uh, security. Okay, so as you can see here, it's going to go ahead and install our kernel packages. So yeah, our kernel is three gigabytes. Whoa. Okay. So um, this isn't like a maxed out server that I have running here. So uh, I think the total compile time for the kernel was two to three hours. And I even got an email saying, yo, your CPU has been overloaded for the, you know, this long or whatever. But yeah, um, so I'll go ahead and let that run. I'll pause the video for now or skip it, I mean, and I'll get back to you once it's been installed. So our kernel has been installed here. So just to verify, we're currently on 3.10. Now Red Hat slash CentOS 7 uh, by default is configured to boot from the latest uh, version of the kernel that you have installed. So we can just do reboot at this point and it should boot up with our new kernel. Let's go ahead and do sudo reboot. Oh, yep. So here we are, we've booted back into our server and we can see now that the Linux kernel version that's installed is 5.5.8, which is our uh, compiled kernel. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions or, you know, just go ahead and subscribe already. What are you waiting for? All right, bye.